Canva is a web-based, easy to use design software that has changed the way people create designs today. Not only is the software free to use, the company is also valued at a whopping $40 billion. Its net worth grew from $3.2 billion to $40 billion in three years, making it one of the most valuable startups in the world. The founder of Canva is Melanie Perkins, and it all started in her mom's living room. Melanie Perkins was a cute, shy, introverted teenager when she first thought of a new solution to the difficulty her students faced while they were using design tools like Photoshop. Ironically, that shy, introverted teenage girl would hear no more than a hundred times while pitching her business idea, but undaunted, she would go on to create a company that is valued at more than $40 billion. Melanie Perkins was born in the year 1987 to an Australian-born teacher and a Malaysian engineer of both Sri Lankan and Filipino descent in the small town of Perth, Western Australia. Melanie attended Sacred Heart College near Sorrento, Northern Perth. From a young age, Melanie already had the marks of greatness as she routinely got up at 4.30 a.m. every day to train when she still dreamed of becoming a professional figure skater. And this spirit of hard work and dedication would pay off down the road when Melanie would take her startup idea and bang on every door, never accepting defeat, until she would get the needed funding to take her startup off the ground. Melanie's first romance with entrepreneurship came at the age of 14, where she started a business selling handmade scarves at shops and markets throughout her small town of Perth. Melanie would later go on to credit this experience with building her entrepreneurial muscles as she recounts how she always, quote, remembered the freedom and excitement that came from building a business. Melanie soon enrolled in the University of Western Australia, where she majored in psychology, commerce, and communications. True to her hardworking spirit, Melanie also tutored her fellow students in graphic design. While tutoring, Melanie noticed that most of her students had problems learning how to use common design tools like Adobe Photoshop, which seemed just too complex. Melanie considered the process of taking a design from production to print with the available software to be too difficult and time consuming. She also wanted to revolutionize design in a way that a complete amateur could start designing their own creative pieces in minutes in one place using one tool. This experience would be the grandfather of Canva, which would be born several years later. But for now, Melanie had to act fast because she also feared the problem was too obvious and someone obviously would build a solution first unless she moved quickly. Melanie soon came up with an idea for software that would cut out all of the difficulties of learning how to design, making it easy for literally anyone to craft quality designs without any prior knowledge or experience. Melanie decided to test this idea in a small niche first, the school yearbook niche. She believed that this niche was steady and lacked major competition. So Melanie joined forces with her boyfriend and soon enough, their first office was set up in her mother's living room. One year from graduating, Melanie put college on pause and gave all she had to Fusion Books, a website that students could use to design their school yearbooks. Melanie and Obrecht, who doubled as a manager, worked tirelessly giving their heart and soul to Fusion Books with loving support for Melanie's mom, of course. Their hard work paid off and soon the business had 400 schools as clients and in five short years, Fusion Books had become the largest business of its kind in the whole country of Australia. They even expanded into France and New Zealand. Looking at Melanie's life, one could immediately see that although she was hardworking and smart, Melanie was always ready to make big sacrifices to do something she considered worthwhile. Just like she had to sacrifice and put her studies on hold so she could build Fusion Books, Melanie would take even more daring sacrifices in pursuit of her goal to make design simple, collaborative, and fun for everyone, everywhere. Despite the massive successes of Fusion Books, Melanie was still very far from her vision of a simple yet high-quality design tool that was accessible to everyone. And to do that, Melanie needed funding for her startup and funding was hard to come by in the small town of Perth. 
fortune favors the bold, they say, and fortune favored Melanie when the Silicon Valley venture capitalist and kite surfing enthusiast Bill Tai visited Perth to judge a startup competition. Melanie and her boyfriend Cliff Obrecht met Bill Tai at the Innovator of the Year Awards in Perth, where Melanie won Innovator of the Year. She approached Bill Tai with her idea, and he promised to meet with her if she could make it to San Francisco. In San Francisco, Bill introduced Melanie and Cliff to Lars Rasmussen, who went on to become a business advisor for the duo. Melanie soon got a chance to pitch Canvas Chef to a room full of tech investors when they gathered for a dinner hosted by Bill Tai. The pitch was for a software that allowed you to craft high quality designs just like you would make a pizza. By dragging and dropping elements onto the screen, Canvas Chef was really a metaphorical pizza. The pitch didn't get the desired response and one investor who was present at the pitch said it wasn't the most stylish analogy. Melanie left the dinner that night without any favorable responses, but she would not be deterred. Rather, that night gave Melanie a new plan that was going to get her into more meetings with investors and venture capitalists, kite surfing. Melanie started kite surfing because Bill Tai told her how kite surfing was a great opportunity to network with some of Silicon Valley's tech executives. I had not done it before, and to be honest, it's not something that I would normally naturally try, she said. Just like when Melanie put her studies on hold to pursue her dreams, now again, Melanie was willing to embrace the dangers of extreme water sports so long it would help make her dreams come true. Interestingly, Melanie never searched for an easy way out. Rather, she accepted new tough challenges as long as it would bring her closer to her dreams. This quality would be repaid years later as Melanie would soon get a big breakthrough that would change her life forever. Melanie's new hobby, kite surfing, would soon pay off as she and Cliff became regulars at Bill Kai's kite surfing gatherings. And while there, they would meet tons of tech executives looking to invest in new startups. However, the disappointments did not end there for Melanie. She and Cliff continued to pitch their startups to different investors and many of them turned her down. What's most interesting is how Melanie handled the disappointments. For someone who received at least 100 rejections by investors, one would be surprised and impressed by Melanie's resistance, especially in the face of 100 rejections. Looking back at those rejections, Melanie recalled that there were so many rejections and each one of them really hurt. There were so many rejections and each one of them really hurt. After facing 100 rejections, most people would forgive you if you gave up on your dream. But that is not what Melanie did. Like a true winner, she turned every rejection into a stepping stone for success. Melanie and Cliff would walk out of every rejected pitch feeling deflated, but more importantly, focused on how to improve. For instance, after every pitch, Melanie and Obrecht would take the toughest questions they faced from potential investors and use them to rework their pitch deck. They repeated this process on and on until they had a pitch deck that answered almost every question a potential investor could ask. Looking back on her very first pitch deck, Melanie would go on to say, it was pretty terrible. I knew nothing about the norms of startup pitch decks. Melanie would review the same pitch deck again and again and again until the pitch deck got better and better. And in time, they had a winning pitch deck. An important lesson from Melanie's story is how she handled rejections and disappointments. Melanie faced over 100 rejections and like us, she naturally felt the urge to quit. But she refused to quit. In fact, she shook her head and got back up again. And after each fall, she focused on how to become stronger next time. She didn't take the rejection personally. She didn't hate the investors for rejecting her. Rather, she took their words as pointers in the direction in which she should improve. And she did improve. She kept on improving until the point where Silicon Valley had to notice her. Even though there are lots of challenges facing female CEOs in the tech and business world, Melanie wasn't phased. She continued pushing, not worrying about her gender. That determination soon paid off when in March 2012, Melanie got the chance to meet Cameron Adams, an ex-Google employee who was building his own company, Fluent.io, at the time. 
Melanie, expecting Cameron to offer them business advice, was delighted when he agreed to sign on as a co-founder. Their fortunes steadily became better, and a few months later, they raised $3 million in seed funding for their company, Canva. The name had been changed after a rather interesting story. The co-founders were looking for a new name, and one of the company's employees pointed out that the word canvas was actually pronounced Canva in French. Canva was officially launched in August 2013. They started with a handful of employees and executives. While Canva didn't launch with an immediate bang, the company steadily grew to reach 50,000 users a month. In 2012, Canvas raised another $3 million and the company exploded into global markets. In China, where Western startups were known to struggle, Canva had become a surprising success and even had an office in China. By 2015, Canva had reached 4 million users a month and the company was on a roll. Canva secured a further $15 million in Series A funding. Canva only continued to grow, and by 2018, Canva had surpassed 10 million users and over 200,000 paying customers. As of November 2021, Canva is now valued at $40 billion and has over 2,000 employees. Canva also has over 50 million active users per month. While all of these numbers are certainly interesting, they are even more impressive if you think of the numerous challenges and rejections that Melanie and Cliff faced while turning their Canva dream into a reality. Melanie is living proof that hard work, determination, and sacrifice do lead to success. Even though she faced over 100 rejections, Melanie pushed on to create a revolutionary design tool for everyone and that tool is now valued at $40 billion. It's just like she says, if you can put all of your mind and all of your effort into something, and then you can see that time and effort and determination equate to success, you will be more ready to take on bigger and bigger risks. Melanie challenges us to dream big and to pursue these dreams with consistent hard work and determination, not worrying about the things beyond our control, but focusing on the things that we can improve. When asked about the challenges she faced as a female founder in the tech world, Melanie responded, It's actually, for me personally, not something that I've given a lot of consideration to. And I think that that's been really helpful for me. Because I think that if I blamed getting rejected from an investor on something that I couldn't control, it would really take the power out of my hands. She continues, Whereas when I blamed it on my pitch deck not being refined enough or my strategy not being refined enough, it meant that I could continuously refine the things. Um, and make it better and better and better until eventually we landed investment and found people that supported both me and my vision. Above all, she challenges us to take a new approach to failure and rejection and her story invites us to welcome the obstacles in our path and to think of them as stepping stones to achieving our dreams. If you wanna hear more inspiring stories about people whose drive and determination led them to change the world, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like and a comment down below.